to another Devotion of Hope. I'm Pastor Josh. I hope you've enjoyed these devotions. Um, if you've been missing them, you can go to our YouTube channel and find every devotion we've recorded there and get caught up. Uh, during this time, we've been trying to be very encouraging with our devotions of hope. And so uh, today, our devotion of hope is titled Undefeated. And we hope that you enjoy it, that it blesses you, that it helps you with your perspective, uh, especially with the way things have been going in our world. It seems like right now people are distracted from the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. They are maybe feeling a little bit defeated. People are feeling isolated. Um, there's a lot of social unrest in our communities and in our world. And uh, our outlet, the way we see what's going on in the world, the media is absolutely horrifying right now if you watch it and if that becomes your focus. And people, I think right now, are really um, having a hard time keeping their eyes on Jesus because I, I believe that when we're afraid, when we're living in, in fear, we have a hard time focusing on the goodness of God who, who loves us, who has our best in mind. Um, who wants relationship with us, and who I believe one day will absolutely be victorious. And so today we're going to talk about uh, uh, being undefeated as a church, as a people, as a believer in Jesus Christ, and I hope this encourages you. Uh, um, Today's verse comes from Romans 16, 20. And I know I usually don't just do one verse and there's a lot of, a lot of scripture in here that we'll read to you. But, but this verse stands out in my mind, especially with the way things have been over the last few months or maybe even 2020. Maybe you're one of those people that are like, man, I can't wait for 2019 to be over. And we've hit 2020 and you're like, can we go back? I want to do over a mulligan. Uh, sometimes I feel that way. Uh, but this verse has been, it's a verse that encourages me and hopefully it'll encourage you. And it's from Romans 16, 20. It says this, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. I, I need that sometimes. There, there are times that I can start to feel defeated, but in the end, I know that that's not true. God is victorious. God is capable. God is the God who wins. This verse is a reminder that in the end, in the end, we win. We are not a defeated church. We are a getting ready church. We are getting ready for Jesus to come back. We're getting ready for God to do more than we can possibly hope or imagine. We're getting ready to move to the places that God is calling us to. We know that our God is God who keeps his promises. The problem for us is we don't really know when the God of peace is going to crush Satan under our feet. And soon for us is sometimes not soon enough. Growing up, I was always taught that things are going to get worse. And when they do, Jesus is going to come and rescue us because ultimately the church the body of Christ is going to be ineffective in its mission to join Jesus in his work of redeeming creation. This doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't really line up with the message of the kingdom of God. I try to talk about things that I believe throughout the year. And even though uh, we're not in the Advent season, I think that today is a great day to talk about what we believe and what I believe about the direction that things are heading from the time that I've spent in God's word and in prayer. That in the end, we win. And I think we can all, every believer in Jesus Christ can agree on this part. In the end, we win. Uh, I've been told that I'm a, a pan-millennialist. Uh, Christ is coming again and it all pan out in the end. Uh, some people might wonder why I don't spend more time speaking about the subject of eschatology and more specifically the second coming of Christ. And the reason is we really don't know the specific details surrounding his return. What we do know is that he's coming and that we're supposed to be ready and that we're supposed to work until he gets here. So, so those are the things we know for sure. He's coming, we're supposed to be ready when he comes, and we're supposed to work until he gets here. 
And I know soon in our verse might not seem soon enough, but God is already crushing Satan under our feet. Sin can be defeated in our lives. We are to be victorious as a people. Our message of hope is a message about an undefeated kingdom. It's a kingdom gospel. The gospel of the undefeated kingdom is a great message. So if we read the whole uh, book of Romans, um, in our whole letter, it's this, it's this message to a church in Rome. And Paul's talking about wanting to visit them soon. He has been planning the trip and eventually gets to Rome, but it's not the way he intended to get there. He's under guard, but has freedoms, kind of like, kind of like house arrest. Uh, you know what Paul does when he gets to Rome? He claims the kingdom of God, and he taught about Jesus. Looking at Acts 28, it says this, They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God from the law of Moses and from the prophets, and tried to persuade them about Jesus. That's in Acts 28. It also tells us, for two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. And that's Acts 28, 30, 31. In Acts, Paul is declaring the kingdom of God as something that has already come. What I find really sad about some of the most popular thoughts of today in eschatology is that they seem to be based on the thoughts and writings of men instead of on the word of God. Many people um, in the church have taken words of fiction and treated them as though they are gospel. Uh, it seems like I hear all the time, and, and it's one view that Things are going to get worse, so Jesus must be coming soon. And I wonder sometimes how we develop that idea, if we actually developed it from the Word of God or if we developed it from things we were told. Uh, I just kind of wonder how we came about that idea. Because I believe that his story, history, his story, is a victory story. History is ultimately God's story, his story. There is a fall, there is redemption, there is a kingdom, and there is God's final victory. And there are a lot of things in between. What was the primary message of Jesus Christ while he walked the earth? Listen to this. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. That's the message of Jesus when he's walking around. The time has already come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. That's Mark 1.15, if you're curious where I got that. Everyone who has come to Christ can relate to the good news about their personal salvation. Uh, we experience it in a personal way. We know the changes that God's Holy Spirit has uh, wrought in our lives. And we know that uh, we are different people in Jesus. And we know the relationship with God we have through Jesus Christ and the forgiveness we've experienced but the theme of the word of God is that the good news is about the kingdom of God and our salvation as a people takes precedence over our salvation as individuals. It's important to understand that history is going somewhere. Not every little piece is predestined, but there are things that are definitely going to happen, like the return of Jesus and final victory when sin and death are placed under his feet. We have hope to seek the kingdom because we know the end of the story. When Jesus came in the flesh, he brought the kingdom of God with him, saying, Truly, I say to you, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. He's talking about the apostles right there. We know that he is seated at the right hand and reigning at the right hand of the Father right now. I believe his kingdom will grow not diminish within the confines of history through the power of the Holy Spirit and the preaching of the gospel. Every Christian believes that the end of history, Jesus is victorious. At the end of history, Jesus is victorious. We all believe that. The difference is that I believe that Jesus' kingdom 
his reign and his final victory will happen within Earth's history. During Advent each, each year, we read Isaiah 9. And so if you want to grab out your Bible, you can turn there right now. And I'm going to be reading verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shaken them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. If you look in the beginning of the Gospel of John, you'll find that Jesus is the light that has come. And I believe that that is the light that Isaiah was talking about, the coming of Jesus Christ. You see, the kingdom of God is already an established kingdom. The light has already come into the world, and I believe that there will be no end to his kingdom. But instead, that there will be a future state of completion where every enemy has been defeated. And as the scriptures say... And the last enemy, enemy to be crushed under Jesus' feet will be death. 1620, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. I hope that that gives you some hope for the way things are heading. That gives you some hope for your future. Our God is still a good God. Our Jesus is is still a savior for all that would have him. The Holy Spirit is still at work changing the hearts of men and calling them to Jesus Christ. And the message of the gospel is absolutely the message for today. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, Lord, today we just uh, want to come before you. Confess our doubt at times like this. Lord God, for any time that we've doubted your goodness as we've seen the events taking place around us, Lord God, we want to say we're sorry. Lord, we know that you are a good God, that you are the God that the Bible tells us you are. And Lord, we want to follow you and tell people about you and invite people to be a part of the kingdom that has come, is coming, and will come again. Lord God, we love you and we want to follow you with our lives Help us to be a people that bring hope and point people towards the goodness of Jesus Christ, uh, especially in these times. Amen. I'm going to bless you. Um, this is a Jesus benediction when he's sending the people of the kingdom out to do kingdom business. I'm going to bless you with that today. If you want, you can extend your hands to receive the blessing. That's what we would do on a Sunday. Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go this week and make disciples, welcoming them into the kingdom of God and teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded us, knowing our Lord Jesus is with you always to the very end of the age. I hope you've enjoyed this devotion of hope today. Uh, Feel free to leave us messages or comments. We love hearing from you and we'd love to... Uh, uh, be able to keep communicating with you and being in contact with you every way we can. This is Pastor Josh signing off. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.